Today with Amazon Business, Shannon Stuckey of Walburn Woodworking helped her team buy 63 circular saws. Okay, Andy, take it easy. Now she uses her time to focus on growing something big. Buy smarter, dream bigger. Visit Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. Hey, weirdos, it's Darren from Weird Darkness. Join me this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern at KCORradio.com, where you can listen to the show and chat with me online at the same time. I'll be talking about Tokyo ghosts, giant eels, paranormal events on Mount Everest, a phantom truck stop, demonic possession in South Africa, and even a supposedly real werewolf sighting. All of that and more on the next Weird Darkness radio show Listen and Chat, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern at KCORradio.com. Welcome, weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is a Chamber of Comments episode where I answer emails that I've been sent recently. Sometimes it's just a nice complimentary email that I receive, sometimes it's heart-wrenching, sometimes it's asking for advice. Your emails always come directly to me. It's not an assistant or a service that I have. I try to read every single one of them. And very often, I'll reply to those emails right here in the Chamber of Comments. And you can email me anytime about anything at Darren at WeirdDarkness.com. Darren is D-A-R-R-E-N. Darren at WeirdDarkness.com. Our first email comes from Vance. Dude, I love your Reddit list episodes, and I honestly do not believe how you can keep a steady and straight voice reading the Reddit handles of some names. I just sit at work and almost laugh out loud with some of them. But that's honestly the biggest part of the fun of a Reddit list for me. Well, thank you, Max. I appreciate that. Yeah, some of them are very hilarious. I love the puns that people use for their Reddit names. And I'll admit, there are times that I have to stop and do a retake on just the name because I'm laughing or I'm having a hard time understanding it. Uh, by the way, you mentioned that you listen at work. Uh, if you do, and uh, you've got coworkers that are listening along with you, uh, I would love to have you uh, register for our Weird at Work contest. I do, a, ra I do a, a random drawing every month. It's the second Wednesday of each month. And uh, if you win, you get uh, four Weird Darkness coffee mugs, a bag of Weird Dark Roast coffee, and a Weird Darkness t-shirt. So Go to, just go to the contests page at WeirdDarkness.com if you're listening at work and you're also sharing it with friends there. Our next email comes from Nessa. Hello, Darren. I've been listening to your podcast for the last few months. I've enjoyed every single one you've done. I also joined the Facebook page. Problem with the Facebook page is everything I've posted so far has been, remo has been removed from even posting it. The first one was telling me others on Weird Darkness not to be fooled by my other profile because it got hacked and is trying to scam people, and I figured a warning was suitable. And then I posted about an ancient fact, and that was denied. Afterwards, I posted a joke, which many of us have on this page, but that was also denied. Why is that? Do any of those things go against the rules? If I'm not allowed to post there, I'll just leave the group. Well, um, thank you for letting me know about this, Nessa. I looked into this and I see what the issue is. Uh, if there is an, a, a Facebook account that is less than a month old, then anything it tries to post to the Weird Darkness Weirdos Facebook group is going to automatically be declined for posting. Uh, this is because there are so, so many spam accounts out there. Um, we probably reject a good 20 of those a day. Um, people who are creating brand new accounts and they're just doing that in order to spam to, to spam the group with their messages and and we have no idea how you know which one which of those is legit which isn't and so uh, since most all spam uh, comes from new accounts what we do is we make sure that uh, anybody who's in the group and posting has been on Facebook for at least a month and that doesn't that doesn't rule out uh, all the spam. I, we, I've seen some spammers that have been online for three, or on Facebook, that is, for more than three years. So it's not, it's not a, a perfect method, but it does help us weed out the spammers. 
Um, another reason that's not for, not you specifically, but another reason that somebody might not be able to be to post or even be allowed in the group is if their Facebook profile isn't active, uh, meaning uh, you, you're not posting really at all on your own profile. You're only posting to groups, uh, or uh, you don't have a profile pic. If you don't have a profile pic on your Facebook uh, profile, then that's also a, an indicator that you could be a spam account. Obviously, there are people who don't, who are not spammers and just don't have profile pics, but that is uh, something that is required. So, all you need to do, Anessa, is just wait until you've been on Facebook for a month and then suddenly you should be able to post no problem at all. All right? And I'm sorry that you're having that issue, but it, it's just for the best of the group that we do it that way. Um, this next one comes from Barry from Derry, North North Ayrshire, Scotland. I know I'm butchering that, uh, Barry, and I, I apologize. Anyway, he says, Hi, Darren. I was just listening to your episode about the female resurrectionist, Helen Miller. Uh, I note that you kept saying Helen Miller knee begby. I just wondered if you knew what that meant. Knee in Scotland means previously, as in her maiden name or unmarried name was Begbie, but her married name was Miller or Millar. It can be spelled both ways. Anyway, thought that might be of interest of you, uh, interest to you. Still loving your content. Take care. Signed, Barry. Um, thank you, Barry. No, I did not know that. I wondered why uh, it said Helen Miller Nee Begbie. Um, I thought that was like part of the name or something, like DiCaprio, you know, right? Or Von Van Helsing, you know, something like that. I thought knee was part of the, you know, part of the name. So, in other words, her name was Helen Miller, maiden name, Begbie. All right, so that makes sense. So I, I think in that episode, though, I kept saying every time I mentioned her last name, I kept calling it Helen Miller Knee Begbie because uh, <laughs> I didn't know any better. I thought that was the full name. So thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, David sent me an email saying, I'm listening to your Fireside Brights episode and there are a lot of stories about sleep paralysis. I have a question for you. I know what it'll sound like, but I'm asking sincerely. I want to know your thought process on this. The question. There is so much legitimate medical information out there, including treatments, causes, and diagnoses, etc. You've said numerous times you believe that it is demonic in nature. Why is it that you believe it to be so? I myself have never experienced it. Well, I may have a number of years ago, but I'm not, so, I'm not so sure it was exactly that. Thank you for your info. I enjoy your show, and as far as ghosts and dragons and such, we have very similar views. Look forward to learning why you think this way. Signed, David. All right, David. Well, um, the reason that I believe sleep paralysis is demonic, um, how do I put this? It's not all cases of sleep paralysis that I believe are demonic but I do believe that demonic entities can use sleep paralysis. So I know that's kind of backwards for what you were, where you're going, but I, the, I'm, I'm sure that there are medical uh, reasons that people might have sleep paralysis. It's, it's actually been proven why sleep paralysis takes place. Uh, the actual physical part of sleep paralysis, it's a medical thing. I, I get that. Uh, our brain switches off our, our muscles while we're dreaming because if it didn't we would be trying to act out our dreams physically and we would end up hurting ourselves or hurting somebody else in the room while we're sleeping um you'd be you'd have a lot more bruises than you do now as well as broken bones and concussions and, and everything else because you know what what you do in your dreams and sometimes it's dangerous stuff can you imagine waking up and realizing you were acting all of that out while you were dreaming, I mean, you, your body would definitely show it. So that's why the mind turns, turns that off. Sleep paralysis is when you wake up, but your brain has not turned off that paralysis function, in order, that, that self-protection thing. So now you're awake, but you also can't move. And it is a terrifying feeling. So that, I do believe, is medical. That, that part I don't have an issue with. The demonic nature of it is when it comes to the things that you see and feel while you're in sleep paralysis. Because it doesn't explain, um, the, the medical aspect doesn't explain what we see. It only explains the physical aspect. But there are people who see uh, 
it's something it's called the old hag syndrome where a, a they'll, they'll see a witch or an old woman or sometimes it's a man whatever they call it old hag but it doesn't have to be a hag but some sort of creature that is pinning them down that's the feel you I mean you're you are pinned down because of sleep paralysis but seeing that entity pinning you down is different um, some people uh, see shadow people uh, others have seen something in in the corner that they can't quite understand where it's coming from uh, me personally I saw a demon and the the it's scary enough as scary as it is with sleep paralysis the the overwhelming sense of evil that I felt when that demon was in the room makes me believe that there is a demonic aspect to sleep paralysis. Again, not every time, but when people see these things, uh, I believe that it is demonic. Another reason that I believe that is so many stories that I've read that have been sent to me uh, say that they were finally able to snap out of it once they called upon Jesus to save them. Um, I don't know, uh, and I had an email about this uh, uh, earlier. I think it was, I think it was uh, maybe in the in the previous chamber of comments. Somebody had complained uh, that. Oh no, I take it back. No, it wasn't in the chamber of comments. It was it was one of my patrons. They had uh, expressed a concern because they are not Christian; they're Jewish, and so they didn't appreciate me saying that it was uh, the name of Jesus that saved people from these these these. Uh, um, predicaments, you know, these encounters. Um, but I'm, I'm only reporting what I've read, so I don't know if maybe uh, another another religion would have the same cap same uh, capability. I don't know if, uh, for example, um, Buddhists, oh, excuse me, uh, Muslims, if, if Muslims can call on Allah during a sleep paralysis moment and it'll snap them out of it. I don't know about that. All I, all I can report is what I have read and my own experience, and every single one of those has been somebody calling upon Jesus in order to save them. But that snaps them out of it. And so, again, the demonic aspect of it, demons don't like the name of Jesus Christ, so that is another reason. So, I know I was bantering back there, I went a whole bunch of different directions, I, I, I hope that explains where I'm coming from, if not, um, drop me an email and let me know and I might be able to try to explain it a little bit more, but uh, I think that pretty much sums up the way I feel about it. So if you'd like to drop me an email, you can do it at Darren at WeirdDarkness.com. Again, Darren is D-A-R-R-E-N, Darren at WeirdDarkness.com. And please uh, tell everybody about the podcast if you can. Let them know uh, that you that what you like about it and uh, maybe just encourage friends, family members, uh, especially now. Now is the perfect time because we're getting ready to step into October. Uh, of course, that is a big month for all podcasts that are true crime and horror and paranormal related, but it's especially, um, it's especially great for us because that's our birthday month. We'll be celebrating seven years of uh, Weird Darkness this coming October, and it's also our fundraiser month where we ask people to, to donate in order to help those who struggle with depression. And I'll give you some more details on that as, as October creeps in. So thank you very much, Weirdos. I greatly appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Weirdos. Our October Weirdo Watch Party is hosted by Mr. Molto, another horror host we've not yet had the privilege of having a party for. We're all gathering together online Friday, October 28th as we, together, watch Mr. Molto presenting Halloween Inferno, the Boogeyman Cut from Coleman Brothers Films, which follows our favorite immortal serial killer Michael Myers after the events of 2018's Halloween film. The Weirdo Watch Party is always free, so grab your popcorn, candy, and and soda and jump into the live chat too as we watch the movie along with our undead horror host. The Weirdo Watch Party is Friday, October 28th. The fun begins at 5 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. in Hawaii, and 1 a.m. for our friends in Greenwich Mean Time. And until then, you can watch horror movies and horror hosts for free anytime, day or night, on the Weirdo Watch Party page at WeirdDarkness.com. 
Hey Weirdos, it's Darren from Weird Darkness. Join me this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern at KCORradio.com, where you can listen to the show and chat with me online at the same time. I'll be talking about Tokyo ghosts, giant eels, paranormal events on Mount Everest, a phantom truck stop, demonic possession in South Africa, and even a supposedly real werewolf sighting. All of that and more on the next Weird Darkness radio show Listen and Chat, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern at KCORradio.com.